National Science Seminar 2024, a flagship event of the National Council of Science Museum, Ministry of Culture at the Nehru Science Center in Mumbai, which brings together 34 brilliant students from all over India, representing states and union territories, to showcase their insights and perspectives on the thought-provoking theme, Artificial Intelligence, Potentials and Concerns. With this, we will take you directly in conversation with the Chief Guest Professor Ravindra, Dean Alumni and Corporate Relations, AI and ML Chair, Professor IIT Bombay, along with some participating students from the Indian states of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and Andhra Pradesh. Sir, of course, we are standing today at the Nehru Science Center and today was a National Science Seminar in which the, some brilliant students from across India are representing this seminar it's related to the artificial intelligence and of course the concerns what would you like to say about the initiative well I would listening to the, uh, the the young children speak I felt a sense of assurance that AI is in safe and secure hands AI is only going to grow and deliver impact along our national missions or national aspirations I'm pretty confident that the next gen of students has adopting, uh, will adopt AI and will make significant impactful uh, outcomes from the way they use it for various applications uh, that spur economic growth in the country, that give technology leadership to the country and also create the last mile societal impact. I think there is a significant opportunity here and India is tipped at the, at the right tipping point, I would say, aligned with the Vikasit Bharat mission. As you talked about Vik Vikasit Bharat, and it reminds us of the vision of our Honorable uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. And I would like to ask you uh, that in the recent address of uh, our Honorable Prime Minister, he talked about that India has got a double AI power, uh, which he meant that one is of artificial intelligence and one is of aspirational India. So what would you like to say on that? Yes. So aspirational India is India assuming global technology leadership. India is poised for that. There are three aspects that help us in the attributes that we need to focus on. One is the speed, the second is the reliability and the third is the scale. And AI has, AI as in artificial intelligence has a very strong role to play in aspirational India as it realizes its ambitions towards assuming global technology leadership, we have already made significant forays in the healthcare area, in the semiconductors area. We are also beginning to make those kind of forays. I think AI will just help us to speed up and catch up in terms of assuming technology leadership while making sure that we are aligned with the Honorable Prime Minister's motto or phrase that he uses Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas. I'm talking about your address and I, it was a wonderful address re related to the um, AI and my question to you, you talked about that uh, with artificial intelligence, domain knowledge is must. I'm talking yes. in terms of data, data science. So right. what would you like to say on that? Yes. So as I said in the talk, data is in a sense incomplete. If you really want to have reliability, you know, we talked about three things. One is speed, second is reliability. Reliability in decision making, reliability in planning, reliability in being able to deliver high quality decisions. If you have to do that, you should not forget your physics, your domain knowledge. The domain knowledge becomes very, very important along with data because domain knowledge itself is not complete. Data itself is not necessarily complete. When we combine these incomplete sources of knowledge, we get a better understanding and through foundational and generative AI, we are able to look at various scenarios and be able to deliver better decisions. So, there is a place for domain knowledge, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence plus domain knowledge becomes augmented intelligence and that's something that I'm sure in the days to come we will see more of that. We are already seeing that in the form of digital twins, we are seeing that when we represent the domains in, for example, safety critical systems like our nuclear reactors, aircraft systems and the like. We certainly want to represent those along with the data to be able to make high quality, reliable decisions. And eventually AI will help us do that at scale.
Maybe that's the third attribute. You want speed, you want reliability, and you want scale. AI can help us deliver that at scale. My last two questions, of course, uh, the other one is related to the IIT Bombay. And uh, as I was reading one of uh, uh, the press releases, which has mentioned that IIT is uh, free to design its curriculum. And of course, with the NEP 2020 coming in, so how it has played a major role in, especially now with the artificial intelligence, which is the need of the hour. NEP 2020 is a landmark uh, um, a policy that has come up. Everyone in India has to, uh, it, it has a huge opportunity for citizens of India to receive learning at the rate that they aspire for. We at IIT Bombay are also aligned with NEP 2020 and we are designing our curriculum in ways that deliver the objectives of NEP 2020. NEP 2020 also has, you know, if you look at it, the education system itself in our ancient cultural heritage, there is a wealth of knowledge in the, in the way even knowledge was delivered to the Indian population. Indian knowledge systems, for example, the Dhatu Shastra, the Vaimanika Shastra, the Rasa Shastra, there is so much of wealth of knowledge which can be exploited to complement our modern science understanding of the same areas. When we combine these two, there is an opportunity to very creatively design our curriculum that's a blend of both of these aspects and thereby we are able to deliver high quality education and also in terms of, you know, tuning it to an individual's learning capabilities as well as aspiration. I think NEP 2020, just the framework certainly helps us to do all of that. There is a certain sense of autonomy in the way we develop our curriculum at IITs. But I would say that while that autonomy is there, more from the perspective of understanding the different disciplines, as a vision and as a broad framework, NEP is a very, very critical aspect that we need to keep in mind when we revise, build our curriculum, review our curriculum, revise our curriculum and the like. NEP 2020 20, 20 is central to all of that. My last question to you. Of course, you had some uh, wonderful address, as I mentioned before, um, uh, on artificial intelligence. And your concluding words wa were that AI uh, can't take the place of human touch. Right. So could you uh, elaborate on that, so please? My last slide was, can AI systems mimic and deliver the comfort of a mother's touch? And I left that as a question to the young students just for them to think and see whether it can ever be realized. My own sense is, and the reason I put up that slide was that I wanted to provide a clear distinction between AI systems and human beings. We are talking of human-centric AI. We need to talk about human-centric AI. While humans can learn about AI systems, are AI systems tuned to humans? Can we have AI systems tuned to the way humans can be more comfortable in using those as facilitators in the way we make our decisions. So clearly, cyber physical systems demarcate man and machines, right? But what we want to make sure is that these machines or the advanced systems or using AI can help in making life more comfortable for a human being, but they can never replace the human being. And that slide was primarily that no matter how sophisticated you can become, I have my a wish list that can AI systems really mimic the comfort of a mother's touch. I have my own uh, sense of whether it can or whether it cannot, but I wanted to leave that as a challenge to the young aspirants to see whether they can measure up and think about that as a problem. So this is a question for our young generation, so yes. to decide that what exactly they feel about it. Of course, I would like to congratulate you for participating in this National Science Seminar at the Nehru Science Center. I'm coming from Arunachal, which is a known, to, uh, which is our seventh, one of the seven sisters, and a beautiful uh, state. So. Um, what would you like to say about today's seminar which talked about the artificial intelligence and the concerns? My name is Doel Paul. Uh, I come from Arnachal Pradesh. 
uh, waste coming district from Dirang. My school's name is Saint Lupin English School, Dirang. So as you have asked about the pre um, about the seminar going on, so uh, this is a really exciting experience and like it is really informative, educational, factual. I'm talking about today's theme, which is artificial intelligence and its concerns. I would like to know about your presentation part. Okay, so. Uh, my uh, presentation was on a general theme like I have talked about the potentials, concerns and the ways how to mitigate the problem like um, giving example of potentials that could be how uh, the potentials in education sector, in healthcare sector and most importantly in agriculture sector. Uh, I have also talked about automation in industries and like uh, research and development then I have uh, side by side also talked about the concern it raises like job displacement, privacy and surveillance, the security risk, then also about the environmental impact, the global dynamic things and like uh, after uh, the potentials and concerns I have talked about how to mitigate the problem or like how to balance the potentials and concerns. Like I have talked about um, how government can launch many of the policies, the initiatives by government, then uh, there should be ethical AI development, human-centric AI development. This was all about my presentation. As Nehru Science Centre works on, under the Ministry of Culture, which is a government of India body, and what would you like to say about these kind of initiatives, uh, bringing young minds onto the board and having these kind of uh, discussions, especially on AI, which is a need of the hour? So, uh, for, I will really like to thank like the Institute for the seminar it have conducted. Like, it is really knowledgeable for like I'm sure all of the students coming here all of even the teachers parents whoever is attending it's like really knowledgeable we are getting so many things new to know like it's really nice first of all uh, many congratulations to you for participating in this national science sem seminar which talks about the AI and its concerns so uh, where you hail from and uh, your background in your school, please. Looking at the camera. So, uh, my name is Ashish Kaur and I am from Jorhat, Assam. Currently, I am studying in class 10th of Jyoti Vidya Pityox. So, I would like to ask you now about the artificial intelligence presentation which, was give, which you have given at this uh, seminar uh, at the Nehru Science Center. Could you elaborate on that, please? So, I am very satisfied with my presentation. I think I have presented well. And um, in my presentation, I specially uh, focused on some particular things like I have focused on some day-to-day uh, -day problems that our people are facing and no one is talking about that problems. And uh, I have specially focused that uh, I have identified the prog uh, problem and I have made some solutions through AI that I have proved that AI can solve these kind of serious and concerning problems very easily. So my last words to you, of course, uh, this is a platform, you are aware that Nehru Science Centre works under the Government of India, Ministry of Culture. So um, I would like to ask you that these kind of platforms given to you by the government, how do you see uh, these kind of things, uh, getting a platform from the government side and representing from a, coming from a state, representing yourself, talking on the topics? So I think uh, these kind of programs uh, creates uh, enthusiasm among the uh, students to be a science enthusiast and to know and uh, do some research on this type of topics because uh, science is the future. Uh, some people might not aware, uh, agree with me, but it's the, it's a fact. You cannot be uh, deny with me. So I think these type of programs will definitely. Um, make people aware about that how world is going on, what is the current uh, technology is coming and what, what will be the upcoming technologies that it's, it's, it will come. So I think this type of programs will definitely help our young generations and upcoming generations. Especially our Chandrayaan, then Suryan uh, missions you, have, you might have heard of. And soon India would be planning to send man on moon. So what would you like to say? 
so i i still remember during when the it's about chandrayaan 3 mission when it's about to land so there was a lot of excitements in especially our states like in our schools uh, thousands of schools were uh, live telecasting that um, historical moment and uh, at i i observed that uh, many students got an inspiration to uh, be in this uh, field and to work for the country in that field like in the space sector like uh, for in the different science sectors so i think this type of things um, creates an enthusiasm among the students to work for our nation tell us about yourself and uh, then about your presentation uh, hello guys i am akash shrinivasan representing from andhra pradesh which is also the rice bowl of india so i it was a great experience coming to national science seminar to be honest it's my second experience uh, last year it was on millets a superfood or a diet fad uh, and now it's on artificial intelligence potentials and concerns every time nss plays a major role in surprising everyone with the various creative topics that they come up with and uh, this one also is an extremely good topic uh, to enhance the creativity of students and let them be aware of what artificial intelligence is 